person on that front desk. When you go into that front desk, unless you've got the right people, you've got some cracking staff, which are lost at the front desk. And it's now, it's some of the things that are actually said on that front desk. Some of them on the front desk don't know what they're doing. They're calling people to help them. Surely, you've got people, they have to go to a hub. Some people don't want to go to a hub. That's their problem inside. They want to sit on the front desk and talk to people. And if you get the right people on that front desk, you can solve a lot of your problems you can solve overnight. Get that solved, that's all. Good point. I've just spoke to the late... Put the end room. Spoke to the ladies on the desk here, and there is a phone number you can phone if you've got a complaint about the phone service or whatever. And it is 0800 819 9030. That's 0800 819 9030. And that's for the Phil's number. Pardon? Is that the Pal's number? Yeah, Pal's number. That's 0800 819 9030. And it will be on this film that I'm filming, so if you want to get that number, up, and the lady said if you ring that, you can complain there, and it will all be taken care of. There's even compensation if you've been phoning for a long time and you haven't had a phone call. Okay, right, next question please from you lovely people. Can I just throw one more thing? Just Come on. Just a suggestion of sort. Um, I'm not going out and mention before one of the phone to, to come through to uh, oh. Oh. And I might go back to my reflection, Dad, before I can pop your phone up again. And I'm really pleased because I'm not well, you know what I mean, I'm like out, I'm just on the um, And I've seen people down the hub, and I've fully come down here once, uh, sort of had a surgery, um, not down the back, phoning up, but he worked very well. And he tried to get the point of him to see a doctor, and he, he got told, no, we don't do it no more, not allowed to, he got phoned me up. He weren't in a very good state. In actual fact, another lady, patient, offered to run him back home. Is it not possible to get a direct telephone for the wall down there for people like that to phone the hub there once is, they're there. There is a phone down there. Now, if that's the one that's beyond the counter reception, yeah, if someone asked to use so that one day, yeah. someone did ask to use that, and the top of the receptionist, no, that's just for us here. So there is a phone available yeah. at, at the hub, but equally, um, I would expect the receptionist that if someone is looking really poorly, look that poorly. they actually would um, deal with that situation no. there. So, it's not that you know, I'm it, sorry it that that's... Best straight line, not that Yeah, no, I'm really sorry about that experience. It's not the thought of the no, pain, but I've got to work this better. That should be, you know, there, yeah. there is that... Um, you see the attack of that, walk down here, like, you know, you did look too good. Yeah, yeah, no. Sure, but... I've got one question in the book here. Um, some person went to the doctors for a blood test results and they never had them within the three days and the receptionist was on the phone for 30 minutes and still did not get through to the people the blood test results. When people say that they were on the phone for 30 minutes to one hour at the call centre, it says that there is no calls coming through. That's basically what someone messaged me to ask up. Can you give me my advice? Sure. So, of a blood test. They were waiting three days for a blood test, and when they went to the surgery for the results, they were not there. So, is that a common thing, or what, what, what would they be no, doing? So, um, so, the results, um, when someone has a blood test, yep. the, um, the specimens are taken to the Ipswich Hospital. Okay. Um, and then the results of the blood test come down electronically into the clinical system okay. at the surgery. Yep. Um, they, yeah, I mean, sometimes they, they will go missing, but okay. the staff can contact the um, laboratory yep. um, and find out what has happened with that result. Okay. So again, they could come into the surgery and, um, All right. and ask someone about that. Well, thank you. You've um, answered so it. If you watch it, you'll be honest with that. Yeah. Lovely. So, next question, please. Why have we got these ladies here? Who would like to ask us something? Joanne? I have a dead serious question now, and I'm dead serious because I'm at risk of collapse. But is it not all protocol to tell a patient that can't tolerate any food whatsoever to drink alcohol when they're on about 20 to 30 or more pills a day? That's a serious question to you. Is it not all protocol to tell someone with a rare condition that can tolerate no food? Whatsoever, if they put food to their mouth, their whole mouth swells up, they vomit, they shit blood, they piss blood, they get fever, they get infection. Is it normal protocol, especially when the person's got lots of serious...
serious physical and mental health issues, is it from the protocol to tell them to keep alcohol or are they not free to be referred on to a specialist dietitian? It, it's not protocol, but in, unless I know the exact details of the consultation and who you spoke to, I can't really answer that question. Your doctors, that's who I spoke to. I think, as we said, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll make contact and just go through any very well, specific I think you need to, issues. Tomorrow, I'm going public with it. Okay. So, anyone else got any more questions while we've got the ladies here? About just it after you.
to, to a situation. Now what we've tried to do um, is recognising that problem, we've contracted with permanent, wherever we can, with permanent locums who don't work anywhere else. By and large, they work just for us because we've got a good relationship with the agencies. My second point is when I put in for um, um, my ESA, I had to uh, put in, <coughs> they wanted to see my medical records and I gave them permission to this. And I said, who refused? Can you tell me why? There's no reason why they would refuse. It has to go through a process. Well, when I but there's no. Sorry, let me, can I explain it first? They told me it was refused. No, so there's a process to go through, but it, it would not be refused if they had your written consent. Well, I did have my written consent, so. I'm, yeah, so there's no reason. There's no reason for it to be refused. So I, I you know, unless I know the details, to be able to look into that specifically. But there's no reason, there's a process to go through um, as long as we've got the patient's written consent and we've got in writing the request for that information, then a team um, at the, um, uh, in ACE will arrange for those records to be released. We'll give your details to the lady, Gary, they will contact you afterwards. After you, lady, you Right. Referring back to Bob Freeman, you have all of these complaints are exactly the same as they are today. Are we still going to be sitting here next year giving you the same complaints? Because nothing's changed. In actual fact, it's got worse. So, you know, what do you want to... I don't understand why we were taken over by us. Our system wasn't broke. Why did you try and fix it? It's not working. AIDS has managed renal surgery in the last 10 years. We haven't just taken the surgery on. Oh, that, why have we changed the protocol? We, we changed the process for phoning in and using the hub because it's, it, it, it was thought and is still believed to be the best way of managing the resources that we've got and the staff that we've got. I accept, as I said at the beginning, that there are a number of people who have difficulty getting through on the phone. There are a vast majority of patients who are getting through and getting appointments. So there's lots more work for us to do. I'm absolutely not sitting here, and neither is Denise sitting here, saying that what you've described to us is acceptable. We know that it's not. We know that we've so got really to do it's more work. work. When you phone but it has, got better. it has got better, the number of people getting through and getting appointments. If people weren't getting through, our doctors and nurses would be sitting with nobody coming through the surgery. We are full every day. All of the appointments are taken. We've got a number of uh, <coughs> DNAs. We've got a number of people that don't turn up for the appointments. And, and Denise has described how we're trying to text reminders and all the rest of it. So there are some wasted appointments because people aren't turning up when they've phoned. But all of our surgeries are full every day, and that's through people phoning up and getting just appointments. Say on the old system, we didn't have this. We didn't have to have these meetings because people were being seen regularly and, and at the time that they needed to be seen. I think they tried to fix what wasn't working. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think also <coughs> one of the things that we absolutely needed to do is introduce a mechanism of ensuring that those in the greatest need of seeing a doctor got to see a doctor. And that's what the care navigation was introduced to do. So um, the care navigators are asking pertinent questions in terms of do you need to see a doctor or do you need to see another healthcare professional? <coughs> and as we've said, we've, just, we've introduced you know, uh, uh, um, uh, physiotherapists, we've got clinical pharmacists working with us, we're introducing mental health workers. You know, in future years we'll be introducing paramedics in primary care. And that's not unusual and it's not unique to ACE. It's not unique to Green Elms. All surgeries up and down the country are doing exactly the same. And making things worse because we respond. 
So the hub, absolutely, we have got to get better. We've said that right from the beginning. It has got to be better. But what would you call the advantage meaning? What would you call the acceptable?